Shi Taiho is one of China's big tigers, the prize of Xi Jinping's anti-corruption drive. If Zhou Yongkang showed that even being a member of the Politburo Standing Committee did not protect you from prosecution, then Shu's fall showed that it goes the same even for China's powerful military. The People's Liberation Army is the world's largest army, and probably its second most powerful. The party controls it through the Central Military Commission, chaired by China's most senior generals and party members. Corruption in the Chinese military is a largely unexplored topic, basically a state secret. Charging Xu for what he did is characteristic of Xi Jinping's style, shaking up the status quo. In this video, let us look at the and how race. Born June 1943 in what is now the Liaoning province, Xu Taiho joined the PLA at the age of 20. Having graduated from a well-respected military feeder academy, he rose quickly through the ranks on the basis of having a formal education. Deng Xiaoping wanted to reform the PLA after many years of turmoil during the Cultural Revolution, and he sought out schooled people to reform and bring fresh perspectives. In 1990, Xu became a political commissar in the Chinese military, with the rank of Major General. On paper, being a commissar meant keeping the fighting forces in line with political ideology. Such responsibilities gave the political department immense power over promotions and personnel recommendations without third-party oversight. A senior political position is thus unsurprisingly ripe for corruption. Two years later, Xu found himself promoted to assistant director of the PLA's general political department. He had been the beneficiary of a high-level purge of the military initiated by Jiang Zemin in the wake of the Tiananmen Square incident. In 1999, Xu was made a full general and he entered China's Central Military Commission. He retired as vice chairman of the CMC in 2013, making him one of the most powerful people in China. It's likely that he's been involved in the promotion of many senior ranking military officers over the past two decades. Shortly after his retirement, things began to unravel for him in a bad way. He was diagnosed with terminal bladder cancer, then the party's anti-corruption body, the CCDI, began to investigate him and fellow Vice Chairman Guo Boxiong for a cash for ranks corruption scandal. So let's talk a little bit about that. The military considers any information regarding its possible corruption a state secret. Thus, we don't have much concrete evidence on the pervasiveness of the cash for ranks scheme within the PLA or how it works. Most of what we know is generally based on rumors and what the military chooses to share. The idea of cash for ranks is simple. If you want to get promoted into a certain position, you need to deliver a bribe. The bribe is not available to everyone. You must have the right connections or guangxi, but is largely required. Uniform officers end up selling these positions because the PLA used to offer little financial security in terms of retirement. So veterans stayed in their jobs for as long as possible, shutting down the pathway forward for people lower down in the hierarchy. In some ways, such bribery helps reinforce the social networks that already exist within the military. The scheme is thought to have originated as simple rewards from a recently promoted officer to his patron. A genuine thank you. The purchase of a rank, though, uh, as the scheme developed, would eventually become so costly for the buyer that they would often turn around and begin monetizing their investment by reselling down the line. And if it was not enough, they would give a small percentage kickback up to the original seller. So in some ways, the cash for rank scandal starting taking on aspects of a huge multi-level marketing scheme. It soon began to undermine the people's confidence in its own military. As is the CCDI style, these main guys, in this case, Xu and Guo, their subordinates are rolled up first before they themselves are taken down. One notable such underling is General Logistics Department Deputy Gu Junshan, taken into isolation and held without release or accusation after 2012. General Logistics handled the procurement of supplies and the management of the army's massive land holdings. He would purchase public land at below market prices and take kickback fees from land developers trying to bid on a particular development. For instance, Diao Yutai No. 7 is a cluster of high-end luxury apartments in the heart of Beijing. Homes there cost some 46,000 USD per square meter. The land underneath these homes was requisitioned by the army in the name of scientific research, and guess who ended up with it? Gu had 
gotten this plum logistics position largely because of Xu. He is alleged to have given Xu's daughter a $3.2 million cash card at a party as part of his compensating kickbacks. Xu also apparently had protected Gu from prior anti-corruption investigations and removals from power. Xu's former position as a secretary on the PLA's branch of the anti-corruption force especially helped with this. The CCDI detained General Xu in December 2013 for investigation. They also arrested his wife, daughter, mistress, and personal secretary. All of them would be convicted. The investigation began in March 2014, and in October of that same year, Xu was expelled from the military and the party. Xu's investigation and expulsion from the party is muddled a bit by national security concerns and his terminal cancer diagnosis. Officials raided his home and reportedly found over a ton of jewelry, jade stones, and cash in his basement. But you don't have the same amount of detail that you get with the Doyong Khan trial. China's propaganda organs excorated the man, calling him a two-faced demon and a national thief. But Xu would be spared truly onerous punishment by the government, as it seems like he would soon be dead anyway. Indeed, he died March 2015 in the hospital from his cancer. Xu's partner in crime, Guo Boxiong, received a life sentence. Gu Junshan, the corrupt logistics officer, received the death sentence with a two-year reprieve in 2015, and it seems like he's still alive too, based on the latest internet searches. In the two years after Xu's arrest, some 30 high-level PLA officers were investigated and removed. Many of these people were political commissars and members of the logistics department. It makes sense since these officers were best positioned to profit from their rank. The party regularly cites Xu Taiho alongside Zhou Yongkang as one of the big tigers in the anti-corruption drive. It's proof to the public that no rank or position is powerful enough to provide full immunity from anti-corruption. Xu's journey is not as dramatic as Zhou Yongkang, who had a spectacular rise to power and a spectacular fall as well. But the government has also hidden away many of the details, such to avoid disclosing military secrets. The PLA considers any analysis of possible corruption within its ranks by a third party as a hostile, intrusive action. I suppose no army wants to have its dirty laundry aired out. Over five years have passed since Guo and Xu's arrest and removal, and the anti-corruption drive continues to this day, though state-owned media does not appear to trumpet each arrest as much. It has been shown to reduce certain types of corruption, such as cronyism, within the party's provincial ranks. I suppose the same could be said as well for the PLA's ranks as well, but we don't know. The reality remains opaque to everyone looking in. Alright everyone, have a good evening, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.